What's up you guys? Dark Saints here again with another video about the division. In this video, I had a special request come in from Mr. P Dilla. He asked me to make a video covering the best attributes on all the gear pieces. Now, I have done this with the in-depth individual armor pieces such as how to build the best gas mask, how to build the best chest armor, how to build the best backpack, etc. However, I can understand where he wants to see all the attributes on one video and seeing which ones are the best. So that's what I'm going to cover in this video. Now, I'm not going to go in-depth on every individual little piece like I did in some of the other ones. If you are looking for those, I will leave links in the description box below so you guys can go check them out individually. However, if you are looking for the best attributes and only the best attributes to run for these armor pieces, that's what this video is going to cover. So, let's see what kind of armor we can build. Now going over the best attributes, the first thing we're going to look at is the gas mask. Now in my opinion, the first best attribute that you can get on this is skill power, and it'll combo very, very well with the backpack, which we'll cover in just a minute. And the reason I say this is there's no reason not to. Skill power will increase your first aid whenever you use first aid, regardless of which one you use. It'll increase your vision pulse damage, it'll increase your sticky bomb damage, it'll increase pretty much all your skills that you use. However, if for whatever reason you do not want to run skill power, you run in a team and you have somebody else that takes care of you just fine on his own, he doesn't need any help whatsoever, which I don't know why you wouldn't want to help him, but for whatever reason you don't, I would opt for either health on kill for you tank builds or a gear mod slot for you assault builds that are looking to add more damage. As for your resistant attributes, there's not really a whole lot to choose from here. I would recommend the enemy armor damage as you will do more damage to the enemy, which is always nice. However, if you guys do want to have a little bit more resistance, you may want to go with the burn resistance. It's not that high, but the less time you're on fire, the more time you're in the fight. As being on fire stops you from using your skills, it stops you from running. The only thing you can use is the first aid, and you can dodge roll. So I would recommend the enemy armor damage, but you can opt for burn resistance if that's what you feel like you really need to run. Next is the minor attributes. For you skill assault builders, for those of you guys who are using the sticky bomb, I would obviously go for the sticky bomb explosion radius. However, if you guys are weapon assault builds, you might want to go for the pulse critical hit damage bonus. Try not to confuse this with the pulse critical hit damage, as it is more. However, this one does not have that. It only has the pulse critical hit damage bonus, which is minute. However, any little bit of help is beneficial. In my opinion, I would probably go with the Seeker Mine Explosion Radius as I run the Seeker Mine with Gas Charge, and that's very beneficial for me as the lead assault. However, if you guys are looking for the maximum amount of damage, you may want to opt for the Pulse Critical Hit Damage Bonus. However, it is very minute, like I said before. As for you support builders, you want to look at the first eight ally heal. The more health you can give to your allies, especially being able to heal the tanks from zero health to full health, is always beneficial. So you tanks are going to be very supported by your support character. Now the next one we're going to look at is going to be the backpack. On the backpack again I highly recommend the skill power. You can combo the skill power of this with the skill power of the gas mask giving you an easy 10 to 11 pushing 12,000 skill power increasing your pulse damage, your pulse duration, your health whenever you use first aid ally, your sticky bomb damage, whatever you want to use without having to sacrifice anything it doesn't require you to put any electronics whatsoever. It just gives you that skill power, which I highly, highly, highly recommend. Now, like I said before, if you guys don't want anything to do with skill power in any shape, way, form, or fashion for whatever reason, then you may want to opt out for armor. Or if you guys want to run more lead assault, you can run the critical hit damage. Now, the armor mitigation is being increased to 75%, so you guys may want to run the armor to get your toughness up that much more. However, if you guys are lead assault, you may want to go ahead and pick up that critical hit damage. As it's not exactly great, but it is there. It's not necessarily the highest. The gloves are higher. But if you are looking for more critical hit damage, feel free to grab this if you guys are running lead assault. Your armor's okay. People are able to support you. You might want to go with this. However... I do recommend the armor over that, and I even recommend the skill power over the armor, as you can put the armor on another piece somewhere else. As for the resistance attributes, there really isn't anything to look at on the backpack. The best one, obviously, is going to be the ammo capacity, or again, you can go with burn resistance, if, for whatever reason, you really, really do not like being on fire. 
As for your minor attributes, for you skill damage builds, you have Sticky Bomb Damage comboed with Sticky Bomb Explosion Radius, as the backpack does have two minor attribute slots. For you Assault builds, you may want to go Pulse Critical Hit Damage and Pulse Duration. However, I will tell you that the Pulse Duration might not be the best thing in the world, just because if you guys are running the Incursion and you happen to use the Pulse at the end of a round, you can't use your next Pulse until that one expires, and if your Pulse Duration is very long, even if you get it back, because it's taking so long to expire, you won't be able to activate the next one. So that might not be the best way to go, and if you choose not to go that way, you may want to go ahead and turn it into the First Aid Ally Hill, as a lot of people do use First Aid. It's a very good combo to run with if you guys are running the Pulse with the First Aid. As for you support builds, obviously you're going to go with First Aid Ally Hill, as well as Pulse Critical Hit Damage. Again, you don't want your Pulse to last too long. If you guys are playing the supportive role and using the Pulse, then you may want to choose this. So really, the Assault builds and the Support builds are going to be very similar on this. However, for whatever reason, you guys have another skill, maybe a Support Station or whatever. If you guys want to run that, that's fine. That it's your choice, whatever skills you may want to use. However, I recommend the First Aid Ally Heal and the Critical Hit Damage for the rest of you. If you're going Skill Power, go with the Sticky Bomb Damage and the Sticky Bomb Explosion Radius. The next one we're going to look at is going to be your Chest Armor. Looking at the major attributes, my best recommendation for this is going to be armor, health on kill, followed by a gear mod slot. However, there is one that you can set up a little bit differently, and that is running the triple gear mod slot. If you're lucky enough to get this, you can take all three of those gear mod slots, throw in some firearm gear mods, and just massively increase your damage output to the insane level. That being said, however, that does mean that you're going to need to put armor somewhere else so that you can stay alive. Now there are other armor pieces you can put armor on, such as your backpack, your knee pads, your holster, stuff like that, and that is a very good option. However, if you wanted to, let's say you put a gear mod slot on your holster, then you don't have to put a gear mod slot here and run the triple gear mods. My best build would be the armor, because that's going to raise your toughness, your health on kills to help keep you alive, as there are going to be a lot of enemies to kill, and the more enemies you can kill, the more health you can get back, the more times you can play those clutch plays. And the last one would be the gear mod slot to raise your firearms or your stamina. Or for your electronics build, you can go ahead and opt that. The other option would be to run the armor with the double gear mod slot. That's an option as well, and it's not a bad option. However, it is another option to choose from. As for the resistant attributes, there's nothing to choose here. The only thing to go is the ammo capacity. So just go ahead and put in the ammo capacity. The rest of it's just increased kill XP, which is completely irrelevant once you get to max level. As for your minor attributes, you skill damage builds, I would go with the sticky bomb damage. For you assault builds, again, I would go with either the pulse duration or the seeker mine explosion radius. Again, though, watch out for that pulse duration. You support builds, there's not really a lot of support that you can choose on on the chest armor. However, if you do want to go with the pulse duration as a support character, feel free to do so. Just be careful of the pulse duration outlasting the time that you need. If you can't see the shotguns coming at you during the incursion, this can be a very bad thing. It's not going to pick them up if you used it right before the round started, so you do want to be careful on when you use it. Now, if you use it at the beginning of a round, that pulse duration is amazing because it'll last a very, very long time. Just be careful on when you use it so that you don't have to wait for that expiration. Next, we're going to look at is the holsters. Now, if you haven't put armor on your chest armor or on your backpack, you may want to go ahead and put armor here. As it's a free slot, you might as well go ahead and throw in the armor there, and now you have armor covered on something else. It may be not be as high as some of the armor pieces, however, running armor here should help increase your toughness so you can survive longer. Now, if you do have armor somewhere else and you're fine on that, you don't want to go maximum toughness or maximum tank, which is an option, you might want to go ahead and add in the gear mod slot. Running the gear mod slot is beneficial, and will help you with increasing your stamina if you are looking for more health or increasing your firearms which was I would recommend if you're not going to run the armor you probably aren't going to need the stamina you might want to go ahead and take that gear mod slot and turn it into a firearms gear mod or an electronics gear mod however for you electronics build try to watch out for your damage cap as there is still a damage cap on your skills so watch out for that as for your minor attributes again skill builders you're looking for the sticky bomb damage on this piece Assault builds, you're looking for the Pulse Critical Hit Damage. This is not the Pulse Critical Hit Damage bonus. You do not want that. You try to avoid that. You're going to want that Pulse Critical Hit 
damage. Make sure you grab the pulse critical hit damage as it is pretty significant whenever you use a pulse. And for you support rolls, you're going to run the first aid ally heal. Next, we're going to look at the gloves. Your major attributes you're looking for, and these are the best. I don't care what weapon you're running because these work on any weapon. You're going to want to run the critical hit damage, critical hit chance, and health on kill. That's the best roll. Now, you can argue that, oh, all I use is my SMG. I want to throw in my SMG over health on kill. If you guys really want to do that, I'm not going to stop you. It's your character. It's your build. However, I prefer the health on kill because it works with any weapon. I'm not restricted to a weapon. So you're going to want to run that critical hit damage. It is the highest of any other armor piece, going all the way up to 40% on the 240 gears. You can run the critical hit chance, as running critical hit chance is always nice. And, of course, running the health on kill. That being said, I don't recommend running the 240 gloves. I know I said that 240 gloves can go all the way up to 40%. However, for this, I recommend the 204 gloves with the perk Savage as it increases your critical hit chance on all armor, or all enemies, I'm sorry, out of cover. Thus, you will do more damage to all the enemies out of cover. So, I recommend running high-end gloves at 204 rather than running a 240 gear set item. As for your minor attributes on the gloves, as there are no resistance attributes, you're looking for you skill builders, sticky bomb damage again, assault builders, you're looking for pulse critical hit damage, and for you support builds, you may want to go pulse critical hit damage again, unless you're running a support station, which I really don't recommend really messing with the support station, as you're normally able to get back pretty quickly, but if you are looking for the support station to last a little bit longer, for those that run the support class, you may want to go with the support station duration, as it will help it last a little bit longer. Next, we're going to look at the knee pads. On the knee pads, your major attributes, you have armor and a gear mod slot is the best combo in my opinion. However, you can run armor and critical hit damage. I still recommend the armor and the gear mod slot, as the critical hit damage does require you to land criticals. But if you guys land criticals often, you may want to go ahead and stick with that. I still recommend the gear mod slot as increasing your firearms will give you damage across the board rather than just when you hit criticals. So I recommend the armor and gear mod slot. As for the resistance on your attributes, I would recommend shock resistance, burn resistance, and scavenging. The reason I don't recommend bleed resistance, even though I did cover that in the other one, in a glass cannon build you're going to die a lot more often. So running the bleed resistant is a lot more beneficial because the glass cannons have no health. Therefore, the bleed damage is going to be a lot more severe. Now, for everyday players that have a lot of health, pushing 80, 90, 100,000 health, that bleed really isn't going to be a burden to you, and you'll be able to get it off by using your first aid, which most everyone has, especially if you're running solo. And if you don't have it, you're probably in a team that's running it, and just running through a first aid cloud will remove the bleed effect. It'll also remove the burn effect, but when you're on fire, you're not able to use skills yourself, so I recommend the burn resistance. Now, the best, in my opinion, would be the shock resistance, burn resistance, and scavenging. Scavenging is not going to hurt you, it's only going to help you, and it's pretty high on knee pads, so I recommend running that scavenging on the knee pads. As for your minor attributes on the knee pads, I would go with the skill damage builds, I would go with the sticky bomb explosion radius, you already have all your sticky bomb damage. Might as well go ahead and throw in the sticky bomb explosion radius again to make that bang a little bit bigger. As for you assault builds, of course you're going for the pulse critical hit damage. And for you support builds, you're going for first aid ally heal. Now, something I want to point out before I end this video is that you assault builds, be careful on the pulse critical hit damage and the pulse critical damage bonus as well as the pulse duration because of the talent Scrambler. There are some pulses out there that run Scrambler. If they run that, then whenever you Vision Pulse, you're not going to get any bonus whatsoever because the Scrambler is going to counter your Vision Pulse, making it to where they're immune to it. Therefore, you're not going to have any critical hit chance increase or any critical hit damage increase. So for you teams, always make sure you have a Scrambler on your team. For you Scramblers, make sure you run Pulse Duration, as it will make it to where you're immune longer during PvP. And for you assault builds, just be careful and make sure you know that they're pulsed. Either way, you guys, that'll pretty much wrap it up for this video as far as all the best attributes for the armor pieces. 
However, I am going to leave off with a little bit of gameplay. I know you guys saw the intro at the beginning of this, and I kind of wanted to let you guys know how that started up. So what happened was is we were running around in DZ06, and we opened up our map because we saw these rogues that had been rogue for quite some time, and we noticed that they were pretty much camping around a spawn point. So we went ahead and we went down to see what was going on, and it was actually two teams of three giving six people that were pretty much picking on these two other guys, two or three other guys. They were pretty much picking on them. It was three on six, and they just kept on and kept on and kept on killing them, would not let them escape. They had already stolen all their items, done all that, and they just kept on and kept on and kept on. So me and my team, we decided let's go ahead and eliminate them. So our team of four, we went and we eliminated them. And then, of course, they came back. They tried to take us on. We killed them again. The second time they came out, we decided to go ahead and go rogue on them to teach them a lesson. So we went rogue on them and started killing them. Then we went ahead and left the, down the road, and we were going to camp out and just wait it out. Anyway, they did found us. They came back after us. And as well as the other three guys that they were picking on decided to come after us as well. So there was nine people total. And this is the outcome. So I'm going to leave off with some gameplay so you guys can check it out and see how great it was. It was a really fun battle. I hope you guys enjoy the gameplay. Anyway, you guys, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. And I will catch you guys next time.